It do make the string look more professional, don't it? Well, I'm out of breath. Ooh, let's watch this about Destiny. Let y'all know I got a fucking Destiny, uh, fucking problem. It's just cemented oh, my wait. overwhelming oh, obsession with this. Well, I start halfway through. Let's see if somebody else found the light of not playing Destiny. I say that and I'm gonna be right back on. Before I get into the subject matter of this video, I want to make something crystal clear. This is not a video condemning the state of Destiny 2. This is not a video bashing the immensely talented developers at Bungie. I really don't care about the meta of the game, the community sentiment, any of that. This video is not a Destiny 2 hate rant. If that's what you're looking for, you should look elsewhere. This video is about my own personal journey with this game, and how I've changed and grown as a person because of it. I'm mostly making this for myself, to help me unpack a lot of my feelings about it, and... Oh, every I feel like every Destiny player got a Destiny like they. Destiny can get you addicted to some unhealthy shit, but a lot of my Destiny addiction came from Final Fantasy XIV first, cause I played that I played XIV when it first came out, and I was hella depressed, and so all I did was sit on the game and just was trance like, I can't I can't stay on Final Fantasy XIV for longer than like two or three months. I get fucking addicted and and sit there and just be lost in the world. Like I get in the game and just walk around, just walk, just walk from like country to country in the game. Like that's how addicting fourteen was. So like when I got Destiny and was able to make friends, it got even worse. So it's just like those type of those type of addictions are awful. Well, they're not awful because you get to make friends and stuff like. A lot of my good friends I got to meet in real life, except for my Australian friends. I got to fly to Australia one day, but still, a lot of people in Destiny, most of them I got to meet, not all of them. And so I can't wait to meet a lot of them, still to this day. But those MMO, game, MMO games or MMO type games, man, they can get unhealthy. Like, it'll be stuff, like, I'll be on Destiny just helping people do shit and then cleared everything for the week in one day and, and play all day, every day, nonstop. Like, I got an ungodly amount of hours on Destiny. It's insane. The impact it had on me, for better and worse. Although this is mostly a video for me, I hope at least some part of this resonates with you. This is a story about how I became hopelessly, damagingly addicted to Destiny, and what all came from it. It sounds like rehab, bro. <laughs> it sounds so sad, bro. Destiny did it to you, though. That's Before definitely we dive not this. into the deep end, let's start with some context. My introduction. We all came from Halo. We all came. That's the introduction. That's just I shortened it down for the bro. We all came from Halo, and they announced a new game, and it was coming to PlayStation. So we all jumped on PS4 and just played Destiny like we played Halo. Literally, it. Watch. My introduction to Bungie came from their final Halo entry, Halo Reach. When I Halo Reach was different. Oh, I miss Halo Reach. When I was 12 years old. I remember wandering Time into out. a GameStop. I can play. I can play Halo Reach today. It's just not the same as it was when the game came out in 2010. Damn, it was 2010. God damn. When Destiny, when Halo Re Destiny Reach, when Halo Reach came out, oh my god, dude! Like still to this day, my name on Xbox is Luna Reach, cause I was so hyped for the game. I changed my name. That was the last time I changed my name. On, on Xbox, and it's still that to this day. One day, and spotting the game inconspicuously sitting on one of the lower shelves. I had heard of the series from a close childhood friend, but this was my first time seeing one of them for myself. While I had never played any shooters before, I mostly stuck to casual gaming as a kid. That's nothing. Hey, if Halo is your first shooter, you just a dick. You just it's just a get. It's a different type of shooter, bro. It's just a different type of feeling. And it's hard to explain. 
if you go from Halo to Destiny, like yes, going back to Halo now, it still feels weird. But Halo was a, a just a different type of shooter game to learn than it was Call of Duty. Like I was straight at Call of Duty, but I was a beast of Halo. And, and I was really scared of violent games at the time. Something about it just drew me in. So one of my parents reluctantly agreed to get it for me, despite the age ratings. My parents agreeing to get me the game ended up being one of the best things that happened to me. Halo Reach was an incredibly influential game that completely changed my relationship with the medium. The game was, and still is, incredible. The equally melancholic and bombastic campaign, the incredibly entertaining multiplayer, the surprisingly robust level editor in Forge, it was all amazing to my 12 year old brain. Facts, bro. And still to this day, like, Halo Reach is so epic, because everybody fucking, I'm not saying a character has to die for it to be epic, but you don't see a lot of games doing that. Well, back then at least, like, the hero made it out unscathed. It's like so much so that today, hell, I won't, it's not a lot of heroes living today. You know what I'm saying? But back then, man, shit. Everybody dying? Bro, that was different. And my 23 year old one. But all that aside, Reach was simply a place of respite for me. I was a very introverted, socially anxious child. I had a lot of issues with body image and confidence, and I just felt really awful most days. I often ended up dissociating and distancing myself from my feelings just to feel okay at all. But being able to- I feel like that's a lot of gamers, especially back then. Like, the 2000s was a weird time, especially if you was like an adolescence around then. Dealing with like, uh, some folks dealing with their sexuality, some folks dealing with just getting girls or just wanting to be wanted or having a group of friends and the social anxiety is a high school, especially back then. Like, online gaming was a fucking like threshold that like a lot of weird and awkward kids like me got to meet like minded people and just chill, bro, and not like you you got cool with somebody because of how they play with you on the game not like you know no homo but um like you you got to you got to make a real connection with somebody on the game through their interaction on the game like if you met a dude and y'all y'all matched up on doubles and y'all started slaying everybody you know what I'm saying? And then you just like, fuck it, I'm finna add this dude. And then he become one of the bros. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of my good friends, to this day, I met on Halo. To this day, I met him in real life and everything. Like, 15 years of friendship, my guy. Like, bro, when I say that's my boy, to this day, I can call him anytime. Chop it up like ain't nothing changed. Like, we done grew up together on the internet. And that's the type of friendship that you got online. You didn't have to worry about your, you know, the social stuff that, the social constructs that, like, high school gave you at the time. Like, about, you know, um, what's the one I can think of? Like, you know, like, cool kids and shit and, like, just being a nerd or liking anime back. Yes, back then, folks, you it was not cool to like anime. And so if you wore a Naruto shirt, you got, you know what I'm saying? It just, it is what it is. Even if you was cool with the the football players and stuff that um that knew okay, like my life, like so like I DJ, so but I was a weird kid. So all the football players and stuff, I was cool with all of them. Like my cut like one of my best friends, like he's basically my cousin. Like he's a fucking like a dweeb at heart. He watched like all Marvel shit, but like he grew up in like um and he he played video games so especially when we was younger but like when he grew up he sucked at football and like that was his outlet and so like he know i love the shit but he would never like talk about it but like you know his friends would say stuff you know what i'm saying and then one of my other good friends like well we're not friends no more but you know like he wanted to be accepted with all the cool kids and shit but you know they knew i liked it but they never like said nothing to him but like people around him would say weird shit about him to him and you know it just wasn't like but it was just weird at the time so it's like you got all that going on in your brain in high school then you come home you want to decompress you don't want to hear none of that you hop on the game with your boy on halo 
you can let all that shit go. And then people ain't got to – you could be playing with a football player in his hometown who does those things, but on the game, he's some nerdy dweeb that like Halo. He may not play any other fucking game but Halo. But he your boy because y'all don't play doubles and shit. And that's how the game – that's how the gaming world is. And that's what's cool about it, that you don't have those, like, weird social – and I don't know. We, everybody was young back then, like – People, the weird stuff that we used to think about back then is irrelevant now, and it's crazy, like, even, like, diving deep on that shit, but people, that shit didn't matter, but school made it matter, you know what I'm saying, and so, I'm going on a tangent, but when you got home, the game, like, broke those walls down, and you could be yourself without being judged, so I get get what he's saying able to drop all those worries and come home to a game i loved a community i found like-minded people in was a huge comfort for me i met so many wonderful people through matchmaking and custom games alike getting to talk with people all around the world and share that enjoyment of reach with others was a hugely formative positive experience while i felt like a hopeless lost teenager in school in my hometown i felt like i had a home i could return to and reach where I could laugh at the absurd forge creations people made, where I could share my deep anxieties and worries I didn't know how to share with others in person, where I felt like I could simply be myself. Needless to say, I care a lot about this game, and I sunk countless hours into it. While I wasn't tuned in with the greater gaming landscape, Halo Reach turned me into a proper Bungie fan. I knew for a fact I would pick up whatever they made next, and that next ended up being Destiny. I found out about Destiny in a Game Informer magazine that we had shipped to my grandmother's house every month. At the time, I didn't have a smartphone or anything like that, so a big chunk of my gaming news was mostly from those magazines. The single screenshot that sold me on it was a first-person image of the Warlock, using a void melee attack in a dank, overgrown corridor, light spilling from a giant fan in the background. And that was all I needed. I remember very little else from the article at this point, but that single image completely hooked me. It sang to me in a way that no other game before had, and I knew then and there I would pick up the game as soon as it came out. And when the game did release a few months later, I giddily booted it up and breezed through the campaign in a few days. And then I stopped playing completely. I didn't get it. Was that I think all everybody really did was that. to this? I think, I think everybody did that. I ain't gonna lie. D1 year one, I did not stay, I did not stick it through because I didn't understand it. I wasn't thinking of it like, you know, played every day. I thought it was just a story because, hey, like, Bungie made story games. So, like, I get it. Like, it wasn't to my friends, like, begging me to come back and, like, telling me to get it. Like, he bought it for me on Xbox because I played on PlayStation. My friend bought it for me on Xbox so he could teach me to raise because he knew that how to, like, the community was with people that um didn't raid and shit. And so he did it to where, like, people can look at my stats on Xbox to see that I did the raise and stuff. I was just making a new character on my PlayStation when my PlayStation character was first. And so when I did, I told I did exactly what he said, and they would invite me, and I got to raid and stuff, and the rest is history. I think I was coming in with far different expectations than what they were promising in their marketing, but yep. even looking at it from what they were trying to do, it was lackluster at best. The campaign was incredibly dull, I disliked the PvP experience, and I had little interest in any of the endgame activities. Yep. In fact, I didn't even really understand the concept of an endgame at that point. Mm -hmm. I was never an MMO player or anything like that. Most of my- I was an MMO player at that point, but I didn't- even in Final Fantasy uh, 14, I didn't- I Still to this day, I really don't play the end game in 14. Like, and I can make a whole video on people in 14. Like, they're assholes. They may act like the nicest people in the world, but if you're not in their niche groups or whatever, bro, they're not. They don't take new people in there. They'll probably be nice to you to fill up their ranks so their, F their uh, uh, FC can get ranked up and shit. But other than that, they not studying you and not trying to help on damn sure not trying to be nice. I'm not going to say all of them, but majority of the people are like that. My game experience was with consoles like the Wii and Game Boy Advance, and my only PC gaming was with Minecraft. I was expecting a fantastic campaign with bombastic set pieces and emotional staying power like Reach, but what I got stood in stark contrast to that. So 
I just stopped playing and moved on. I didn't hate it. The gameplay was still super fun, but I came away from it rather disappointed. I pretty much just migrated back to Reach and other games and didn't think much of it for the next year or so. My rediscovery of Destiny was Taken quite King. funny in retrospect. I remember seeing a trailer for the Taken King and thinking it was a brand new game in the series a mere nine months after the base game. I didn't even understand the concept of a game expansion at that point. That's how divorced I was from MMOs. I had to have a high school friend tell me it wasn't a new game, but simply a big addition to it. I was kind of interested, but not really super pressed to pick it up. However, for some reason, I did start dabbling in the game again very close to the expansion's release, just a few short weeks before it was due to come out. And it and was for some different. Reason, it was different. And it made sense. Bro, I, boy, I'm right there with you, boy. Boy! Right, boy. Things started clicking. I started playing the PvP regularly, even though yep. I was still terrible. I did far more strikes and found them a lot more fun than I had remembered. While I still... They changed it. They did a lot of updates in that first year. I ain't even gonna count. But he telling he, he tell the truth, because it was... It's, so the Destiny one day one, I don't care who you are. It sucked. And y'all can... The people who stuck out throughout the first year can... Hyper all on that stuff, because I'm like that with Destiny 2 year one. Like, Destiny 2 launch was trash, but I stuck it out. But even, but Destiny 2 launch was way better than Destiny 1 launch. And Destiny 2 launch in that first year made hell of a lot more sense than Destiny 1 year one. And I, and I can, I, I argue with anybody about that one. People didn't touch any endgame stuff with a 10-foot pole. I was enjoying what I was trying a bit more. I still wasn't hugely invested, but I was enjoying myself. And when the expansion hit, so too did the beginning of my addictive, obsessive relationship with this franchise. Yep. The Taken King absorbed me. While the story was still nothing compared to my experiences with Reach, I still enjoyed it a lot. There were actually a few memorable missions that I replayed multiple times just to experience them all over again. That opening mission on Phobos still kicks ass. And around this time is when I started really delving into the endgame experience. I started occasionally doing raids, I tried and promptly gave up on Trials of Osiris, I did a oh, handful yeah. of Nightfalls, all that stuff. Now that I had a proper grasp of what the game was rather than what I was expecting it to be, I found myself sinking heavily into this world. I wouldn't say I was an incredibly- I feel like a lot of us at the beginning of Destiny wanted another Halo, and that's not what we got. But in retrospect, I, I I welcome it. You know what I'm saying? They had to do something different. The active community. They, they damn near didn't even know what they wanted. And shit, if you go back and look at like all the articles and stuff, but it is what it is. Community member, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. This relationship with the series continued on for a few years into Destiny 2 Vanilla. I enjoyed the game and played it very regularly, even Gosh, though I wouldn't have difference. considered myself a hardcore player back then. The claws of the game were already dug into me pretty deep, but when Forsaken rolled around, that's when they clamped down even harder. Before Forsaken, I can't say for certain whether or not I was addicted to the franchise. I spent a lot of time with it, but I wouldn't say I'd played it an unreasonable amount for a high schooler with nothing but time on their hands. But after Destiny 2's seminal expansion launched, I can say for certain that I was absolutely, without a doubt, addicted to this game. I was all in at this point. I had already been very invested in the game through the last year, despite all the issues with Destiny 2 at the time, but this just cemented my overwhelming obsession with this game. It was no longer just a place for me to hang out and unwind after work or classes. It was a lifestyle. Yeah. It was around this time when I started engrossing myself in external media around Destiny. Lore videos, raid and nightfall guides, weapon reviews. If it was related to Destiny, I was probably watching or reading it. I wanted yeah. to know everything about the game. I kept up with all the weekly This Week at Bungie blogs, detailing balance changes, new content teasers, and any other little morsels they shared. I fell head over heels for the game's marketing campaigns. Their flashy trailers for new seasons with incredible music and carefully curated gameplay moments always got me into an excited frenzy. I particularly remember the trailer for Season of the Dawn occupying my headspace for the entire week before it launched. They call me. Hey man. Hey man. When Saint came back, hey man. Hey man. Eat, bro. That just brought back memories, bro. Hey man. Saint, my dog, boy. And the shotgun is so 
I miss that shotgun. I miss when it was void. Fuck the kinetic slot. I whoever lived. Destiny was no longer just a casual hobby. It began to eat away at everything around me. My brain was flooded with constant media and information surrounding the game, and I wanted nothing more than to immerse myself in the world and get away from everything else. I started neglecting classwork. I declined invitations to go out with friends to social gatherings. I began self-isolating, feverishly obsessing over the game. It went from a fun hobby on the side to my primary activity from day to day. Mm -hmm. I didn't really realize it at the time, but all this obsessive consumption of Destiny 2 related content was done as a way to escape my intense feelings of depression and anxiety mm. on top of a newfound uncertainty with my gender identity. Boy, he done hit the head and boy, he said something then, boy. I ain't got no fucking gender identity bullshit or whatever. You know, kudos to whoever going through that. Sorry you're going through that or whatever. I ain't got none of that. But when you're depressed and don't know why you're depressed and the one thing that makes you happy can constantly make you happy, boy, that's, boy. Boy, when I tell you the years between 2014 and damn near shit up into 2022, uh, damn near last year for real. Like last year was the first year in my life when I when I started getting help and started taking medicine for it. Last year was the first year like i finally like had a brain like my brain was clear like i had clarity and i wasn't depressed like it sucks when you're battling depression and people like that mental health shit is so real and then if you battling with your sexuality or something on top of that boy i feel for those i feel for them type of niggas or you just can't get no bitches oh my god boy you can't be depressed and you can't get no bitches that's a different type of pain but it also sucks if you do if you depressed and, and can't get bitches and the bitches is just making your depression even worse oh my god that's a whole nother topic bro listen he said something then. and i think that's why destiny is destiny and fucking Final Fantasy 14 was just like something in me. And what's crazy, like the year 2013, 14, like my depression would dip and like unwaver. And then like over time, it just started growing. And then when I went to my disability stage in 2016 and shit, and just like all this shit, like I went through and living with sickle cells and then like not knowing what's wrong with you and then when you finally get a doctor and they tell you what's wrong with you and they tell you that you're really fine it's just these things it's just you know that you live with just causing imbalance and especially when you come to the black community and like we live with those old school parents that like you know ain't nothing wrong with you you know just pray it away or a lot of this a lot of that you know what i'm saying when that shit is real bro like that shit is real if you need help, get it. Don't sit there and think that you don't need help or whatnot, but it's true. But, man, when I say those one little morsel of lightness in those times, you get super addicted to it, bro. Like, for me, it was watching anime, playing Destiny. That's all I did. Even when you have a job, like, you think your job is going to make you happy or, like, just alleviate some of that and it doesn't like i worked my ass off i had numerous a job and then i dj thinking i'm living one of my passions and stuff and it just get to where like all oh, that's monotonous i don't want to do none of that i just want to go home i just want to be in the bed and then with sickle said you i'll be hurting and shit non-stop so you be at work hurting dj you hurting and shit you have nothing to relieve yourself that like and then when i just like started getting something for that oh my god bro it's a Dip, bro trying to battle depression with everyday life bro like i commend people who don't need to take none of that stuff and can live a healthy life and they have like different ways of like going through life and they can press through on that shit like i like my dad like i commend like my dad is like fucking superman to me like i don't know how he does it but he does 
even if they show it a little bit, like, bro, that depression shit is crazy, bro. Especially when you're like in your twenties and like you're trying to figure your life out. And then every time you try something, it doesn't work, and you think you're the problem when it just life just it's just life. Life just doesn't work out sometimes. Like, just stuff you try in life just doesn't work sometimes, and it's just like you beat yourself up, and it's just it's crazy, bro. Like, boy, I get it. Oh, that's I played a lot of Destiny doing that shit, bro. I played a fuck ton of Destiny when I was depressed. After a particularly messy breakup in the late summer of 2019. Ooh, boy, don't have a breakup, boy. Man, let me let this man talk. Oh, my God, boy. And lingering feelings of low self-esteem for my teen years, I used the game as a means to shut those thoughts down. I began dissociating heavily, even more than I had used to, and just played the game mindlessly. I wanted anything Bruh. to keep those awful, self-deprecating thoughts at bay. Bruh, so listen, baby. Listen, man, man. So, Destiny became that escape for me. But deep down, a part of me knew that trying to use video games to suppress all these thoughts wasn't a sustainable course of action. So despite all of my crippling anxiety about it, I began- Shit, it had to do some hell. You on YouTube and he got how many views and shit, bro? Hold on. Shit, it did some playing game. Hey, man, you doing bad. Hey, so a lot of people want to be in your position. He may not say it as a blessing in disguise. A lot of shit do that to you, bro. Like, it'd be a blessing in disguise, bro. Began seeing a therapist to start unpacking a lot of my feelings about myself. And it was great. I started to get a better grasp of my emotions for the first time. I began to go out a bit more often and socialize with others at my college. I felt like I was making real connections with people, and things, for once, were finally starting to look up. I was still playing Destiny an obscene amount and still using it as an escape. That hadn't really changed, but it at least no longer felt like my only coping mechanism. But of course, this was all soon before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Our college campus completely shut down. My newfound friends all had moved home to self-isolate and my ability to see a therapist was thrown out the window. The entire world was seemingly thrown off balance and things were more uncertain than they had ever been. This, on top of my growing questioning about my gender, and Destiny's less than stellar seasons during that year, all started snowballing in an all too familiar way. I needed some sort of outlet to keep myself from sinking back into those depressive holes I had found myself struggling to crawl out of before. So I turned my attention to animation and 3D art. Don't tell me he started making a bunch of Destiny videos. Attention, we will be arriving at our destination shortly. While skating back in time a bit, that's a destiny joke, I absolutely loved making Lego stop motion animations as a kid. I still have my super old ass YouTube channel with all the videos on it, and I cherish all of them. It was a huge creative outlet for me as a child. On top of that, I also made a few dozen Minecraft animated intros for people in Blender when I was 14 or 15, which was my first time ever really getting to grips with digital animation. So I already had a general familiarity with the medium. I was passionate about art and animation, and the forced isolation felt like a perfect time to start exploring it again. And as soon as I found out that Destiny 2 had an entire model ripping community with custom made rigs and maps to use in Blender, I was all in. I wanted to create art and animations in the same world I'd become completely engrossed in. However, some of that drive wasn't coming from a place of love. I was pretty discontent with the way Bungie had been handling the story of Destiny 2 for the last year or so. Shadowkeep was disappointing, both in terms of length and the actual quality of content. What's up? Is it King? Is it King Kong or Kong? I don't want to say it's King Kong. That's what it feels like. What up with you though, bro? Content within that length. And while, as mentioned before, I was super hyped for Season of the Dawn, I still wasn't in love with it. And Season of the Worthy was, oh, what up, bro? <laughs> was an absolute mess that frustrated me to no end. I still felt like I loved the game, but the ways in which the story were delivered definitely contributed to my drive to animate and make art. I wanted to take this underdeveloped, undercooked story and make something wonderful with it myself. In retrospect, this was an incredibly lofty goal, one which I never really achieved, but regardless of that, 
the game had given me an outlet to express myself, something that was very sorely needed given the current circumstances. Getting back into making art started pretty small, with little personal pieces made for friends and myself, but over the next few months, it began to become a much more serious endeavor as I gained traction on social media. I remember the first ever post I made that exploded on Twitter incredibly vividly. It was a really quick and lazy Mixamo motion capture video of the Insurrection Prime raid boss dancing to Tame Impala's The Less I Know The Better. Oh, he made that? That's dope. So this dude made that? Then that's crazy. Little Destiny history. Damn, that was a minute ago. I want to know how these Destiny, how those be, how they be ripping this shit from the game and putting it in Blender. Is it all the PC folks that be doing that shit? Because you would, because the files have to be on PC, don't it? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's something I need to look into. Oh, we just, I'm reacting to videos, by the way, bro. So you can uh, join and uh, watch my, you know, put input and stuff like that. It was literally just screen recorded. And for some reason, it went crazy viral in the community. It received over 5,000 likes and got me my first ever surge of followers. That absolute euphoric hit of dopamine from having that much attention on something I did was such a surreal feeling. While that post had no real effort behind it, the attention put on me managed to inspire me to start taking art way more seriously. Getting back into art around the- See, and that's what I'll be trying to tell folks, like, your depression or something that you like, that like, you know, something that like, a dark moment does not make or break you. A, a lot of the times you find your passion and you find something that you really into and like, like it led from that, he went from playing Destiny depressed to making destiny art and then blew up and then made him get with his shit you know what i'm saying like it's always good it's always good bro that somebody can can turn their life around like that and i think that's dope as fuck and the fact that like i know the video he's talking about that's dope as shit bro like i remember when that shit went viral on the destiny twitter this time it felt like a perfect storm i found a new way to love destiny 2 separate from playing it and in the process oh damn for real damn bro i ain't know <laughs> i got to meet a ton of amazing new people i started gaining a substantial social media following i opened up commissions for the first time and after losing a shitty retail job in mid 2021 i went full time on them this is when my relationship with destiny shifted into something complete that's dope that's fucking dope as fuck. And like his art made the made the shit look way better. Wherever fucking program he said blender he's using, that shit dope as fuck. However he doing it, it look way better than the actual game. Completely different. Instead of simply being a fan of the game, I became a community artist and animator. I started gaining more and more traction on social media. My commissions ramped up, and I spent most of my time either working on Destiny related art or playing the game. Things were going great for me, and despite my qualms with the game itself, I was finding myself diving deeper and deeper into the Destiny rabbit hole. In retrospect, it'll do that to you, bro. It'll do that to you. Respect. This period of time with the franchise for me is the one I find myself the most conflicted about. Even though lots of good came yep. from my time being invested in Destiny and its community, I also feel like its absolute stranglehold on me came at such a high cost. The people I met through yep. the game are some of my most cherished friends. Yo, bro, he, he preaching right now, my boy. Hell, I even bonded with my girlfriend through Destiny before we started dating. I discovered amazing artists, got to talk to and make art for dev- Deb, I'm trying to tell you, bro, it be like that, bro, for real. For real, man. Hey, man, you are you, you talking to somebody who know, bro developers of the game, met people who helped guide me towards my eventual transition, ran a charity live stream to raise money for the Trevor Project. And so much more. I genuinely have a lot of fond memories surrounding this franchise. One thing, bro, when I say Disney, bro, it'll never be another time in Destiny, bro. That's why I say, like, I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of happy and sad that Final Shape got delayed because I still get a little bit more time of the Destiny another day, but I just know when Final Shape drop, I'm dropping the game. And that's why I'm already 
hell y'all know y'all been watching me play destiny like i'm already in a mindset of like damn what i'm gonna do when destiny end bro because like look at me now like i may not got a lot of followers and stuff from streaming but my streaming followers is destiny bro like i i literally made a clan i take people to raids i take people to dungeons like people follow me now to this day because of destiny and it's just like bro when final shape drop bro my first off my heart gonna sink second of all my final raid jacket oh my gosh i can't even think bro like i have the raid jackets bro like that's just something that's insane to even think about like destiny there's a love-hate relationship now because it's like you're breaking up with that toxic girlfriend and she the best you ever had bro like she the best girl she's she's she, she she suck your Pennsylvania right, bro. She give you that. She give you that Virginia anytime you need it. She she know what you like. She know how your back wanna be rubbed. All this good shit, bro. She cook your favorite meal, everything. But she just want all your time and stuff. Or uh, she just got them couple qualities that's just like, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like she's just toxic, bro. And you can't get rid of her. But you don't. And you know. You know you gotta break up with her, because, so your life will get better. You know what I'm saying? But boy it's different boy i wouldn't trade for the world but even with all the great things that happened i also find myself looking back with a lot of resentment and regret it feels like i spent so much of my life with tunnel vision absorbing all things destiny while neglecting other parts of my life with the way the game is designed it just eats away at everything else around you working tirelessly to keep you in its grasp. It doesn't want you to leave. And for the longest time, I didn't know how badly I wanted to get away from it. This is something I've sat on for the, I bet. Hold on. the last year now, being divorced from the game's iron grip. Destiny, like several other live service games, want you to stay so you'll spend money. It uses a weekly reset cadence to keep you coming back and to build in a habit of play. It uses limited time events with exclusive cosmetics and rewards that incentivize continued engagement. It uses almost every trick in the book to keep you coming back, day after day, week after week, year after year. This isn't to say that this is a totally negative way to approach a game's updates. It could be really sweet to be a part of a constantly growing, evolving experience. But in my experience, this model is what perpetuated my addiction to the series. The tricks they used worked on me. I was hooked. I would always return for the weekly resets, farm raids and nightfalls, and feverishly grind out their regular seasonal events. And with how invested I was in the game, it wasn't a huge leap for me to become a community member and artist, and to let the game leak into other aspects of my life. When I said before that Destiny was a lifestyle, this is what I meant. Relaxation, making artwork, communities I hung out with, they all revolved around the game. It I mean, I get what he's saying, but I don't think he should have resentment just because that look how much good came from yes destiny does have an iron grip on like the most dead like us dedicated players that was in it bro that was in destiny in destiny not you new niggas that's coming to destiny after years and y'all actually took break from the game i mean us destiny niggas well we you look at our character we we still rocking shit that's not even in the game no more them type of destiny game the destiny players like bro it did some it did it does it did something to us for real bro like i want to look up like that should be a this should be somebody who studied like destiny players during the years of 2014 to 2020 let's just say the 2021 like that span of destiny players right there who was on it non-stop bro there's something wrong with all of us bro for real we was running away from a lot of shit. Could be depression, could be a bad breakup or whatever, bro. But you said I only took a break because I never had the console. Dad killed selling them. Damn, that's fucked up. But, you know, like, I, I still, though, like, it's a lot of us who played Destiny. Bro, Destiny to some of us was like a damn near a religion, bro. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, we live, breathe, eat, sleep Destiny, like, Bro, if you knew how much Destiny merch I got around in my room right now that I can just grab and show you, you'd be like, what the fuck? For real. 
And it's just like, bro. It was like a worm that wriggled into my brain to invade all. And it's crazy that Destiny did like that. They was able to do that, which granted that goes to show how great Destiny is. But for it to consume our, bro, if I wasn't playing the game, I was watching Destiny YouTubers. If I wasn't watching Destiny YouTubers, I was talking about Destiny with my friends. If I wasn't talking about Destiny with my friends, I was sitting there speculating about destiny's lore and shit like that to the point to where i get back and watch a youtube a youtube video and stuff it, especially the lore like i was in the lore shit heavy and it's just like destiny consumed me so much that a lot of the games that came out in between 2014 and 2021 i didn't get to play because i was all about destiny like i couldn't i will only play a game during the two weeks in between an expansion or the week before a um, season came out. And this is before the weekly, every day playing the game, every week for your story. Like, that shit didn't exist then. So it's just like, I only had set times to, like, play different games. And if it wasn't then, if it wasn't on the Switch, like, bro, the only time I played a different game was on the Switch. If it wasn't for the Switch, a lot, and that's why I like the Switch so much, too, because if, once I got off the console, like, if I turned to my PlayStation, I wanted to play Destiny. I never play anything else. Like, and it's sad that I'm saying this, but that's the kind of addiction hold that Destiny had on you. Like, I can't even fathom how many, like, bro, I just, let me put it in perspective. During the pandemic, I right before the pandemic, I quit playing Destiny because that's when they announced the fucking Sunset and the Weapons. When they announced Sunset and the Weapons, that's when I stopped playing Destiny. During that time, all the way up to Season of the Lost, when they announced Season of the Lost right before Witch Queen, I thought it was Witch Queen coming out, but it was just Season of the Lost, and they got me hooked back to Destiny, because they announced that they was taking away Sunsetting. During that time, I played the most games I played in a long time, and I beat so many. I even bought an Xbox One X during that time, because like I wanted to play a 4K. Like my, I had the PS4 regular. I didn't get the Pro for PS4 because um i thought the king final fantasy 15 playstation was going to be a process and they ended up making it a slim and then the king of hearts playstation was going to be the pro i had read a leak that it was going to be reversed but it is what it is anyway um uh, i played so many other games in that stretch that like i have forgot like about all these other games that i was in love with bro and it's crazy to even admit that and like now like now that i'm not playing destiny right now like i'm starting to um i'm starting again i'm finding myself breaking up with destiny and i'm playing so many other games again to where destiny isn't my itch anymore i so when i look back on it though i don't think of it as bad like a lot of people do because it is very fucking like the hold on the whole destiny has on you it's literally the only game i've played up until 2023 bro that's what i'm saying like the hold that destiny has on people is insane insane all my waking thoughts with nothing but destiny i think i sort of knew this was the case for a while before i broke my addiction with this series but I never really explored those feelings in the way I am now, and Lightfall was what prompted the shattering of that addiction and the start of my confused, messy reflection on this whole series. Once again, people love or hate Lightfall, bro. Damn, bro, I love Lightfall. That's just me, though. But I love Strand too, so it's just like. Again, I would like to reiterate that this video is not an attack of the incredibly talented, likely heavily crunching staff that worked on Lightfall. Even though I have several major gripes with this expansion that are relevant to my story here, that's not what this video is about. If you were one of the people who harassed the developers at Bungie for Lightfall, well, fuck you. Double fuck you for me. Because, yeah, like, they did not, like, it's people that lost their bruh. Y'all was, y'all niggas ain't shit. And I'm saying, y'all, I'm not talking to the people that I'm streaming to right now. I'm talking to YouTube who gonna see this shit and and you know watch this video and shit like that and y'all niggas ain't shit y'all shot out bro to the y'all like docs 
teasing them, bro. Like, man, that's one thing I don't play about. Like, it's one thing to be upset about a game and it didn't live up to your expectations, but to, like, go after the people who make the game, like, they just listen to the higher-ups. A lot of shit, you do know that a lot of people who make video games are like me and you. They love this shit. They live and breathe this shit like we do. It's the higher-ups in the suits and the niggas that run the business who don't play video games that their only inclination of video games is going home and watching their 12-year-old badass white kid that say nigga all the time online play video games. And that's all they think. They're like, oh, he's addicted to that, so the game need to have that. No, nigga, your son just like those fucking games. It's just like, bro, that's a whole, a whole subject that, like, bro. But niggas is so, like, bro, like, the people who play video games, especially nowadays, are so fucking soft and so fucking weird. It's like, bro, go touch grass, bro. Like, you dead upset that you got to go harass people who are making it when that's just their job. They're just listening to somebody tell them what to do. They may want to put in X, Y, Z, or such and such, this, that, and the third. But do you think, in all honesty, that they got the control bro anyway anyways when lightfall released i was just completely baffled at the clearly rushed experience that had been sold to me for a hundred dollars the story was incredibly benign the mission design was a substantial step down for me and the amount of additional right, content was paltry at best i thought the single new strike all right so i gotta disagree just because Lightfall was made for the lore Negroes. Like, if you was into the lore, like I am, Lightfall was amazing to us, but I digress. Mike was incredibly bland, and the raid was a pitifully easy, brain-dead experience to run through. After and yeah, that was the one raid that most people completed. Granted, I like a challenging raid, but not all raids need to be hard. Like, I'm going to have to disagree with him on that, because a lot of people... With raids, they just don't raid or can't get a raid group. This was the first raid they could actually get in a group and get it done and, like, not be scared to say they don't know what to do. And they could pick it up easily. Like, I commend Lightfall's raid for that. Granted, hopefully the final shape raid not that. I want the final, bro, for real, for real, honestly, truthfully. I don't even want to say that because I want my raid jacket, but... The fucking witness need to be the strongest nigga we ever fought. But, again, you have to also think, we're super fucking powerful in Destiny now, bro. Like, they can only do so much in the game to make shit harder. And the shit that they can do to make shit harder is not fun to do. Like, putting fucking, um, what is it? Uh, what's the shit? Uh... To make uh still champions like they can't they don't want to you not nobody wants to do champions in the raid that shit sucks nobody wants just a horde of unstoppable mobs constantly at you that shit's not fun that shit is just like you know what I'm saying like they need to, it need to be a cross between Val disciple and ribbon. I think if it's a cross between puzzles, yeah, right, a shit ton of screens. Nobody wants that shit, bro. Like, and we already know that, like, the, 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 uh, oh, yeah, and we already know the fucking, uh, the witness, his fucking, it's gonna be probably a vex and fucking, um, what's the undead fallen nigga's name? Uh, damn, fallen hive. Damn, what's the what's the nigga's name? The scorn. Nobody wants, and we already know that the witness ray probably gonna be the scorn and the vex put together, with the fucking tormentor niggas running around. And nobody want like nobody wants just the the awful fucking them big giant brutes that the fucking scorn had. Like none of that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the shit that they got to make the stuff harder. It's not harder because we're so broken. Like our ability, our abilities are so fucking busted in Destiny. Like people builds in Destiny are insane nowadays. Like people have infinite grenades, infinite hammers. Like fucking, 
I can make a build. I'm just punching shit as a hunter. If a hunter can go around punching shit with his super and his fucking like exotics and shit, bro, we're busted. Like, and I don't want them to nerf us. I really don't want them to nerf us. Like, I like the gameplay, but you cannot say you want challenger shit and then they get a challenger shit and then com complain about it because that's what they do. Bro, they be doing too much for real. For real. I'm stuck on Warlord's Ruin, but I'm at the end. That's what I'm saying. Like, Warlord's Ruin. Like, say, you like you just now came back to the game. Like, to me, I love Warlord's Ruin. But that, that dungeon is difficult for a lot of people. Like, there's a lot of shit going on in Warlord's Ruin. But that's just how those enemies are. And that's how it has to be nowadays. Because we, as characters, like, I have a build. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have an infinite dodge and threatling build with my fucking um, hunter and shit. So, like, even, and then, like, when I shoot a gun, I'm making threatlings. When I'm dodging i'm making threat like i have a threadlings grappling build you know what i'm saying so like people like me who made a build it's just easy but like people like you that like just not getting in and don't understand the new build system and stuff it's just tough so like it's already tough for people who play it casually or who people who are coming back in the game but to make it harder for somebody like me like the shit that they can do to make it harder is not fun and nobody wants to do that that's why it's certain raids that people don't play like uh what's a raid that don't nobody play garden of salvation like garden of salvation isn't isn't easy is is garden of salvation is easy now but when it first came out it was not fun like i enjoyed it because it's a vex lore and stuff but and where it's located but like how, especially fucking um the 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 raid on the dreaming city um uh, riven you know what i'm saying like those two raids were fucking rough as shit so it's just like i get it i get it after years of goodwill and trust that had been meticulously built by bungie it felt like all of that was ripped away to fill a delay with a hasty slapped together expansion the poor quality of it all stood in very stark contrast to the stellar witch queen i was completely taken aback at the huge mess lightfall ended up being and all that was enough for me to take a step back and start interrogating all these bubbling feelings that had been festering for the last few years before this point i was still enjoying the game enough to keep my messy confused feelings at bay i pushed them aside thinking well bungie's doing great right now i'll keep playing because i'm excited to see what they do next i adored the narrative leaps taken in the witch queen the raid was one of the most memorable video game experiences I ever had, especially the crazy intense day one run my team and I, I fought through. Yeah. Come on. Never mind. Get oh! Get oh, oh my god. god. Let's go! Uh, what the uh, fuck? Uh, <laughs> the art design of the throne world is genuinely one of the most jaw-dropping spectacles in any video game I've ever played. Despite my issues and feelings in the background, there was just enough for me to latch onto to keep me going. But with Lightfall, there was no such things to grasp at anymore. The veil had been pulled from my eyes. Even though I was reluctant to come to terms with it at first, I could finally see my experience with this franchise for what it was. A terrible, crippling, one-way addiction that previously had no end in sight. My entire life orbited around this game. I neglected social gatherings. I pushed aside my own physical health. I let myself get comfortable in the repetitive, addicting, fear of missing out cycle of the game. Always logging on and losing hours to it. Yeah, like my, I, everybody in Destiny, especially around that time, has an addiction thing that they want. Like I would log on for shaders. Still to this day, I still log on once a week to check and see if a new shader came out. And I missed one week so far. And I'm upset. Like, it eats me up that I missed that one week. But after I missed that one week, I realized that it doesn't matter anymore. Because, like, am I going to ever use a shader? No, I just like to know that I have every shade in the game. You know what I'm saying? And I'm missing so many other shaders that I couldn't get, like, that were locked behind paywalls and stuff. So, with that being said, like, if they sell a shader... I'm really not missing out on it. So, I get it though. Like, everybody got their Destiny shit. Mindlessly. Speaking I used of, it I need to log in and check and see if I got myself from my own emotions, making every waking hour feel hollow 
and meaningless. The only meaning I felt like I had most of the time was being a Destiny artist and fan. That's all I felt I was. All my life was, and revolved around, was Destiny. What started as a distant, lukewarm relationship with a series I barely even understood eventually snowballed into an out-of-control addiction that I didn't know how to escape from. But with Lightfall abruptly grabbing the veil over my eyes and ripping it off, I finally felt like I could see a way out, that my life could be more than just destiny. I know this video has been messy, but trying to reckon with years worth of thoughts and experiences is unsurprisingly, a very messy endeavor. I had been so tied up in this franchise that trying to untangle it all was, and frankly still is, incredibly daunting. When I finally understood that I was addicted, and that I wanted to escape, it wasn't a cold turkey experience. I still played fairly regularly, albeit far less than before. I still found myself mindlessly opening the game, attempting to lose myself in the world. But those thoughts couldn't just be packed back up now. Every single time I loaded Destiny mm -hmm. up post-Lightfall, those unpacked, scattered thoughts kept bouncing around my mind. Why am I playing this? What? Oh boy, listen. When I say, especially now, when I play Destiny, that is it. Like, I don't have the drive to unlock all the patterns. I don't have the drive to, like, help people anymore. I don't have none of it because like what's the point like because i look at it like this this is an online game and now that i'm starting to see a lot of our favorite fucking games of yesteryears from like the 360 era and the ps3 era their online servers closing and logging off and shutting down like it's make and then like when i log into destiny one like everything i bought stuff some of that stuff that you bought can't even use no more like the license and stuff like that even happened to me on destiny too like i bought the stadia edition of destiny 2 uh, anyway whenever you bought the stadia um it came with destiny 2 but i the license copy for beyond light was tied to the pre-order license that i had was tied to that so like one of my emblems i can't use anymore because it was tied to stadia or my and xbox and it's like because i don't have that subscription because that subscription ran out or stadia is gone i can't use that emblem anymore you know what i'm saying and it's just like you know a lot of stuff is starting to dawn on me and it's like all this money i'm spending on destiny when they close off the servers or when they start making the updates because they're finna move on to marathon granted marathon could flop and fail and then they come back and start pumping money into destiny again but i we all see the writing on the walls and it's just like i don't want i don't know like i'd rather that money go elsewhere you know what i'm saying like um like i'm buying physical copies of games again you know what I'm saying? I'm getting back to collecting games. I'm playing JRPGs again. Like, I beat Final Fantasy 16 yesterday on stream and stuff. Like, I'm playing different shit again. Granted, my, like, people aren't watching me like they used to as much anymore, which sucks. But, you know, it's just like I got to regrind it out. Like, I got to find a new game. But it's just something about Destiny that just feels good. Like, I like getting on Destiny and shooting guns on there just the gunplay and stuff like i get on call of duty and all the guns are like the same like nothing feels like destiny so it sucks that's why I like i limit the type of shooters i play because destiny had just a hold of me like the way it played like i just wanted everything to feel like this and it doesn't and it's just like destiny fixed the end and they're not going to they say they're gonna feed us with those fucking stories and shit, but man, they ain't gonna do man after that first year of stories, that's it. They could prove us wrong or whatnot, but it is what it is. But a lot of Destiny players are now starting to realize like we have to like move on from Destiny. If not, we're gonna be really fucking depressed all over again when we found as we were when we found Destiny when it ends. And it's just like 
the fear, it's like the fear of the unknown. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think that's what a lot of all of this really boils down to. And it's just like Destiny helped out so many people, created so many careers for people who created. Met so you met so many of your like bros through Destiny, reconnected with the bros. Hell, you and me, Devin, like shit, like Destiny helped out a lot of people in their lives and shit. And it sucks seeing it go away, and it sucks to see the state that it's in, and it sucks to feel like this because it's the one thing in your life that gave you so much joy and happiness. So I I get why. I get why, um, you know, is this type of uh, feeling, this like this going on? You know what I'm saying? So, what is the point of logging on right now? What else could I be doing instead of this? Having the newfound context of my addiction framed the experience in an entirely new light. I no longer found myself enjoying the game. The grind for God rolls and armor felt pointless. Finishing the season passes felt like a chore. I haven't finished them in a few seasons. I backed away heavily from creating art of the game and I halted accepting commissions entirely. As these feelings amplified, so too did my distance from Destiny. And with this growing distance came more opportunity to start exploring other things in my life. I began exercising regularly again for the first time in years and started paying far more attention to my physical health. I picked up cooking. I began seeing a therapist again. I started exploring other art mediums. I found tons of new games to try, and I even got back into reading and visiting the local library. With all the extra time being divorced from Destiny provided, I've been able to start focusing on myself in a far healthier way and reassess my relationship with it and games like it. I th See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I totally agree with all that. Like, Destiny takes, took up so much time Especially for me, and apparently p people like him or her, he said he was battling with his sexual identity. I don't know if he's trans or whatnot. I don't know. We don't know. We're just going to start calling them. They, you know how people get upset. I'm not trying to, I'm not, yeah, people who know me know I'm not being disrespectful, but I just got to cross my P's and Q's. But anyway, they and them obviously went through similar shit as a lot of us Desi players, especially up until those times. When you stop playing Destiny and 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 start playing other games like me, like because I stopped playing Destiny, I fell back in love with my Steam Deck. And I realized like how much I loved my Steam Deck again. And just playing all different games. Like bro, I've been I've been on fucking um, Armor Core 6 heavily on my fucking Steam Deck. Bro, I put in 80 hours in that shit in the first chapter alone, just like replaying missions and getting boss fights and stuff. And 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 then like when I fought, what's that last boss? And like for so long, I didn't update it because I had to clear space on my SD card to update it. And so I was playing it offline and so, like, I was playing through the game hard as shit, beat the fuck, got all the way to the third chapter. Fin I was just playing, like, with that uh, memory card I was playing offline. But finally beat, like, all the way to the third chapter, updated and realized that, like, I was playing on, like, the hardest bosses. <laughs> I was playing the bosses that was, like, super hard. They patched in and made them a little bit weaker. They weren't super weak when I went back and played it. But it was just, like damn no one i was getting my ass beat but i eventually beat it but it was just like it made me like fall in love with like replaying the missions making getting money buying like armor and like i told y'all when i was uh i played armor core back in the day day when you would go in a game stop and find a random game on the fucking shelf and be like mm, i want to know what's this you can't do that nowadays people don't even do that nowadays that's another thing I miss, like, tr like when GameStop was GameStop, not this bullshit they got now, not the fucking collectible store. I mean, we can go into a game store or your mom, the mom and pop retro store or collectible store in your city and find a random game with a cool art book, artwork on the cover, and you pick that bitch up and you bought it and you take it home not knowing what you're going to get into and fall in love with that shit. I've been redoing that with Steam and just playing all these games or going back 
and buying games that I remember from the 360 PS3 era. Like, damn, they made a PC port of those. PC port of that? Damn, I'm going to get that. Damn, I just bought all the Yakuza's again. I ain't played a Yakuza since PS3. That's what I'm saying. I miss those days. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I've been on Steam just seeing, like, what people play, what people getting into. And, like, I've been playing on my Steam deck, bro. And when I say rediscovering the games that I fell in love with as a kid and the type of games that I love as a kid, bro, like, I fell back in love with, like, um, just gaming again. And, like, I remembered why I love JRPGs. I remembered why... Let me snooze. I remember why I played JRPGs. I remember why I um like adventure games. I remember why I like open world games. I remember why I love Final Fantasy. You know what I'm saying? Like playing Crisis Core, bro. It took me back to I was like in the back of the car playing my PSP on the way to where my daddy had a show at because I was going with him that night and. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I took my PSP every fucking way. I took my DS everywhere. And emulating a some bro, like, I never played fucking, um, when I was younger, I was a, I was a Sony kid. So I never played none of the 64 games. Bro, I was playing through fucking Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the 64 Ocarina of Time, not the fucking 3DS remake. And remembering why, like, damn, like, we love, like, the PS2 era, the PS2 GameCube, xbox air is unmatched with video games straight up i don't care i argue anybody up and down like yes the ps1 game era is classic with jrpgs yes but the ps2 gamecube xbox era when we got that fresh 3d graphics and but we still had those those childish type of games or those games that like was just like they was just trying a weird idea and just put together some boy listen like Klonoa like I just realized like they made a they re they re uh they made a HD release of Klonoa bro like that went like you said I used to play the shit out of Munch's Odyssey bro that's what I'm saying like bro Klonoa I'm finna buy Klonoa bro because like I play I used to bro I used to play so much Klonoa they're like, I thought Klonoa was a Digimon in my head. Like, I would have dreams of him. But, and with Digimon, like, you know, like, you had, like, you would, like, especially, like, I watched, like, the Digimon movie. I would have dreams and shit when I was little. And Klonoa was in my dreams. But whole time, Klonoa was just this fucking rabbit game that I used to play. Or cat game, where is us? A rabbit cat, whatever the fuck it is. It was this rabbit cat game that I used to play on the PS2 way back in the day. And I was like, damn, the whole time I thought he was a Digimon. And he wasn't. And it was just like, damn, that's one of the things I forgot. Because I was like, I remember like trying to, I remember talking to somebody a couple years ago. Like saying, bro, it was this black cat Digimon, not Gatomon. It was this other black cat that had blue shorts and he had a ring in his hand. He was dope as fuck, and I thought he was a Digimon for the longest whole time he was. But that's the type of shit that I'm, like, falling back in love with my Steam Deck. And I'm just like, damn, bro, like, I see why people love the PC as, a, a con like, as like their main game. And they can go back and play whatever. Granted, I feel like nowadays people just want the high specs and the clarity and the ray tracing and then 60 frames and 120 frames per second and all that shit. When your eyes can't tell the difference over 60 frames, bro. Like, just, just, that whole argument, anyway, it's a whole nother thing. 30 frames is perfectly fine. Man, that's another story for another day. But anyway, playing all those games on the Steam Deck, bro, is amazing. And it's just like, I always would, like, buy JRPGs and shit and never play them because of Destiny. And so it's just like, I remember and why I love all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because of the storytelling. Because of the worlds that you can get lost in and shit like that. Because of the mesmerizing music. Like, bro, as a kid, like, that's how I knew, like, music was, like, my fucking heart and soul growing up. Still to this day. Still love making music. But playing a classic JRPG, like, Chrono Cross and shit, and just listening to the music, bro, like, I'm so happy that fucking Legend of Dragoon, like, the, my Legend of Dragoon that I bought digitally on my PS3 
is now on my PS5 that I can just download and play. That's insane to me. I wish PS3 backwards compatible would finally come out on a PS5, and I would be in fucking the motherland. But that's another story. But still, Destiny like ate up so much time that I lost. Like I feel like I lost a bunch of time. Like God of War, I didn't play God of War when it first came out, and I'm going back and beating my back catalog. Like Spider-Man 2 just came out, and I finally beat the DLC of Spider-Man 2. Like I had had never beat Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I want to beat it. You know what I'm saying? I, I've always beat every Assassin's Creed up until this, and they started taking over and shit. You know what I'm saying? I've been playing Gotham Knights with my brother. Like we were doing a co-op thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I've been playing Call of Duty again with my little brother. That's all that nigga play, and then like me and him are playing games again. It's just like it's crazy that like once you disconnect from Destiny. You start back falling in love with why you really love video games. So I do understand getting a hyperfixation to go away. Because Destiny is a hyperfixation. Like, Destiny is crazy. Bro, God of War has gotten hard as fuck for some reason. Bro, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm still in the base game. Like, I got Ragnarok. Like, I got Ragnarok for Christmas two years ago when it came out. And I still ain't played it, bro. That's how far back I am. I still ain't beat Hogwarts Legacy, bro. So, like, I'm going back. And I'm beating my back catalog. And I'm going to stream some of it. But here recently I've been in love with just playing games by myself again. And not having to feel like I got a stream. You know what I'm saying? Same on both games. Damn. I think I put God of War 1 on easy. I think in retrospect, my intense hyperfixation on this series has caused me to view the idea of a live service game in a completely new light. The amount of hours I sunk into Destiny feels embarrassing to me now. Thousands of hours poured into a single game when I could have taken that time to explore so many other things in my life. Service style games are inherently manipulative with your time, using fear of missing out tactics to keep you coming back, even if you don't really want to. It builds a pattern of habit over time, and seeing how ingrained I was in that is hard to stomach now. Coming to terms with all the wasted time has been painful. I no longer enjoy live service games in the way I once did. I worry that my addictive, obsessive tendencies with them will send me hurtling towards another unhealthy cycle yet again. I don't want that for myself anymore. I want to enjoy games and other parts of my life in a less destructive way. No longer do I want to use games as an escape from my feelings. To let the world around me fade into the background to make excuses for my poor mental and physical health. I want to experience all that games have to offer. I want to tackle my mental health head on and not use games as an excuse to hide from them anymore. I don't want to let myself become tunnel visioned down a single ruinous path again. I love the people that work at Bungie still. I still love the friends and memories I made with my time in its many communities. I love that I found a passion for art again and am actively pursuing a career in it. I right, like Destiny, uh, Destiny brought me back to streaming. I started to stream Destiny years ago, and then it brought me back to streaming after I started upgrading all my shit. So, like, yeah, like Destiny can re really does bring you back to uh, it, has, it has a weird thing of showing what you love and what you hate. And bring it stuff full circle. This is really crazy. So I get that. I love that I met my girlfriend through this game and all my time in it. But I no longer love Destiny. I met a girlfriend through Destiny. So like, I, that definitely can happen. He no longer loves Destiny. I can't say that. I still love Destiny, but... If you watched the entire way through, I hope some part of this video has resonated with you. If you're dealing with an addiction, be that to a game or anything else, just know you aren't alone and that you can get out. Feel free to share your own stories if you have any. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, uh, yeah. Are, and then look up Whoa. how old Europeans are. Whoa. Yeah, y'all go give a... Let's see what dude's name is. Go ahead and go get, y'all can go get him a like and a follow. I'll put the original video in the description. Um... That was a good video. Uh, damn. Can I go back? Yeah, that was a good video. He hit, he hit, he hit on every touch. But I feel like, uh, 
I feel like a lot of Destiny players went through a lot of that shit that he mentioned. You know what I'm saying? So, um, what's his name? Autumn's animation. Oh, so he was, so he's a trans. So he went from boy to girl or girl to boy. I don't know. They uh are Autumn's animations. I'm gonna subscribe. That was a good video. Uh, let's see what we got next. 